Welcome back. We are talking about believing and faith and blocks and breaking down strongholds. This is video three. And we're going to be talking about dealing with strongholds, spirit, soul, and body. It's just going to be a brief overview. Um, but <clears throat> we're first going to start out with the scripture. And I'm going to just read the context. But remember, we talked about everything initiates from the heart of believing. And then we talked about the shifting of mindset where we're not dealing with just like floating around things like kind of a Western intellectual mindset with concepts and thoughts and knowledge. We're dealing with beings that think. So we're going to look at how we deal with strongholds, spirit, soul, and body very, very briefly. Okay, so when I get saved, actually, we're going to start with the scripture. Thank you, Lord. Okay, we're going to go in the flow. <laughs> this is 2 Corinthians 10, and we're going to start in verse 1 because it's really important. I love Paul. Paul is like, I just, I love him. He's like, he had to, he had to really forget his past. I mean, he went around killing Christians. He's like, you know, he just got it, and he's, he just knew that it was, he was, it was so dependent on the Lord. I love that. So it says, now I, Paul, myself beseech you. So I beg you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Oh, I love this. By the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence, he says, I'm in presence, I'm base among you, but being absent, I'm bold toward you. But I beseech you that you may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, but think of us as we walked according to the flesh. So he's saying some people, they think we're walking like in this boldness according to the flesh. But he's saying, though we walk in the flesh, like I have a body, right? I do not war after the flesh. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into, ev into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, who's the word of God, right? And having in a ready readiness to re revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do, we, do you look on things after the outward appearance? Appearance, if any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so we are Christ. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord has given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. Anyway, so he goes on a little bit from there, but basically he's like, I don't, I'm not, I don't boast in anything of myself. I actually come to you in the meekness and gentleness of Jesus Christ, and I'm beseeching you to listen, to listen, like have ears to hear and listen, because though I walk in the flesh, like as a human being in this body, I do not war after some kind of strength that I have in my own self. Like, and I don't war, you know, when um, people attack, I don't war back with the devil's ways. I walk, I am seeking to walk in the meekness and gentleness of Christ. I depend on him for everything. He's saying, I don't war after that. The weapons of my warfare, of our warfare as believers are not carnal. They're not natural war they're not natural things they're not i don't fight with weapons you know of my own thing and um or my own human humanness or human making but the weapons of my warfare are mighty through god god is the power god is the source i mean like <laughs> whatever if i was resting in my own self like tch, like i don't even depend on my own mind or thinking about whatever i want to live by the faith of jesus christ by the word of god that's what my pursuit is to grow in that in that faith with him and trust and obedience with him all right and keeping his word out of love and relationship so i uh they're mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds he's talking about strongholds right casting down imaginations these are strongholds he's explaining what this um, stronghold looks like imaginations and every high thing Right? Okay, so we looked at King Hezekiah, remember? He was took down the high places, high places that Israel was worshiping. I think it's significant that they talk about this in the same kind of way. And Israel, many kings could not tear down the high places because they hadn't prepared their hearts. So there's this heart issue we're, we 
talked about in the first video. Okay, every high thing that's exalting itself against the knowledge of God, right? We're talking about intimacy, knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So there's a high thing that it's exalting itself. Concepts and like floating things around don't exalt themselves. So devils and enemies kingdom, they exalt themselves. They want to puff up. They want to be like a high place that's worshipped like Israel. And he is saying we, God, by God's power, by God's might, we have discernment to look at imaginations and anything that wants to have a fellowship with me in my soul and we bring them into captivity to the obedience of Christ, who is the Word of God. God wants to quicken us from the inside by His Spirit, by His Word, as we know His Word more and more. And we say, excuse me, that is not the fellowship with the Word of God. And you're not allowed in my space, devil. <laughs> and we say, nope, we cast you down, we cast you down. It says casting down by God's grace. He quickens us to have discernment, to recognize those things, and we revenge them in our own life, and we revenge them in others when our, our obedience is fulfilled. So we work this out um, to walk in holiness and walk with God in His ways and fellowshipping with Him and fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, fellowshipping with the joy of the Father and the Word. And we're working this out and revenging by getting rid of them and casting them out and not allowing them in our space and these high things and high places. Okay, so that is kind of that scripture. Now, Proverbs is an interesting thing. I don't know where this is, but you can look it up. But it says, every, God says, every man's ways are right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. So there are sometimes motivations coming from our hearts, but coming from a spirit that might not be God's spirit in our heart, with, connected with our hearts, right? So, God is weighing the spirit and the motivation behind things. That's why we can do things that look like faith or they look like good works or, you know, acts of faith, but it's really not because it wasn't coming from a covering, a humility underneath his instruction. It's the word, but it's not the instructions that God gave us for a particular situation. So God weighs that. This is why with the heart man believes to righteousness, with the mouth confession is made. The heart is first, confession is made to salvation. So we don't just do a bunch of stuff when God said, wait, I told you to do this, but you're doing all this other stuff that seems looks good to everyone else, <laughs> but I'm weighing the spirit and your heart behind it. And so God's looking at the heart. All right, so. When I'm a believer, I get saved, I get born again. She's like, you're born again, born again. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. Woo! That's exciting. I have a new heart and a new spirit. That's from Ezekiel 36, I believe. And Jeremiah, if you read 31 through 33, I encourage you to read the whole thing. Like I think it's in 32 where it talks about, you know, I'm going to give you a new heart and a new spirit. I'm going to cause you to walk in my ways. I'm going to put my fear on the inside of you and cause you to walk in my ways. And we exercise that, like we cultivate that with him. Um, because in James, it does say, you know, purify your heart. So sometimes our hearts can get goofed up if we're doing a bunch of nasty stuff. And God's like, you need to come back to your first love and you need to get your hearts purified. So strongholds are arguments in our soul. He's talking particularly about that. These things affect our hearts. Um, they can affect our um, physicality. They can bring sickness and disease and all this other stuff. Um, it talks about that in Romans 6. It talks about that in Proverbs. And there's all sorts of other scriptures. That's another whole other topic we'll talk about. And some of the things about um, overcoming um, disease and stuff. But anyway, how do we exercise this out? So in Romans 12, it says you give God your body as a living sacrifice. And you say, whatever you ask me to do, I want to do that. And I want to obey. I want to keep keep your word with me. We guard, we guard his word with our hearts. It's, this is a love relationship. It's not like out of some kind of religious like, oh, I'm afraid of him because he's going to punish me. So I better do this. That that's like legalism stuff, and that's not just from just like God. I'm so grateful that you are a living God, and you created me, and you redeemed me, and bought me back from the hand of the devil, and now I can have a covenant relationship with you, and we honor that like just out of love and relationship. 
So um, strong older arguments in our soul, which is our mind, our will, our emotions. And um, so it can be in any of that. That's why it's imaginations. It can be part of our emotions, part of our um, the way that we think about things, and even bound kind of around our will. So there's a, there's a, God wants like our spirit, which our new spirit, our new heart, to be like, boom, with our soul, with the word. And so like all this other stuff needs to get dealt with and strongholds and things like that. And this is how, you know, 2 Corinthians 10 drops down how, how we do that, how we recognize, have discernment and do that. Now, what does this look like in the aspect of faith? Okay, so faith there, I love this word study of going into all these different scriptures about faith, and um, it's so, so deep, and I'm, I'm growing, obviously, and from faith to faith, right? Um, but there is a, if you go into the Greek words behind faith in some of the scriptures, there is a boldness and a confidence, but there's also this, um, it's like building an argument. There's this intimacy and trust in relationship with some of the Greek words, but there's also like, it's like building an argument. It builds an argument. So what I, what I saw when I, and it actually, you make a friend. It makes a friend. So there's, there's other strongholds in our soul, you know, our mind, our will, our emotions, that are kind of there when we get born again, and now we're dealing with this. We're like <laughs> working this, fighting this good fight of faith. And so God's word begins to build an argument and a case to convince through argument and make a friend with those all those all those things just begin to just like no like God this is like God this like trust castles like being built up and and God's word is becoming more real than anything I see any any imagination anything that the world's ways that I've been trained in like it just God's word becomes more as we grow in God's word and as we know more of his promises it's like oh no I love that like no I'm keeping that I'm keeping that I'm keeping that and it just builds this case and it's like makes us a friend we become friends with God's word there's a confidence also um, you know it's this lack of faith it's lacking a confidence um, but it's to convince by argument to consolate pacify with that um, there was another one that I was going to read book um Having an expectation, hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering is like this expectancy. The just shall live by faith. So all reviving, <clears throat> a lot of people talk about revival and revive this. It says <clears throat> the just shall live by faith. So faith is actually the access point to the grace of God, um, which is the power, the God teaching us and empowering us. So we actually get, it, there's it called faith, it's called a door. And so faith is the door point where we actually access the grace of God, which is the power to overcome, to walk with him, to be it walk in his ways, walk in holiness, and be pure with him. Um, but it's also the point of reviving. So any reviving that happens, any salvation that happens, quickening, healing, all of that, the access point is faith. And that comes from a heart that believes. Believe that that's all I was going to say. I'm already getting to like 13 minutes. Okay, so I was going to look at... Um, the story of the fig tree, but I'm going to save that for another video. So believing is of the heart. I'm actually going to save some of the rest for the next video. So we'll just ask God for a continual revealing. So Father, we just ask you by the Holy Spirit that you just continue to reveal any strongholds that even just imaginations that just sound so, you know, good, but they're not your word, that that would be exposed. So I just command hidden things of darkness to come into the light in all of our lives and that the light would expose things that like you would just quicken us and be like hey that's not the word even though i have believed that forever and it just seems like so logical but nope the the carnal mind is an enemy of god so we'll just say um quicken us in jesus name and help us and just expose it and we just say hidden things of darkness come into the light in the name of jesus all right be blessed